Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Desso and welcome back to another video. First and foremost, actually, I want to say that I got a new mic and I want a little bit of feedback on how the audio is for the remainder of the video. Let me know what I can improve and kind of adjust so that way I can get the best sound possible here. Getting into the content, today we're going to be talking about anti-stratting. And anti-stratting and the way that people think about it has been long gone at the higher levels of play. The biggest reason for this is that teams at the higher levels of play will oftentimes have multiple protocols for how to run games and it becomes nearly impossible to traditionally anti-strat them. Let's cover a definition first. Anti-strat is a style of calling whereby an IGL will study opposing team demos and then call specific anti-strats on a round-by-round -round basis to counter the T or CT-sided setups. I hope that definition blatantly tells you what's wrong with this form of anti-stratting. If your opponent has any form of brain, they will realize that since they have been perfectly shut down for four rounds in a row, that you are likely anti-stratting them and that they will need to change it up going forward. That being said, I think to an extent you can still get away with anti-stratting at the open and IM levels of play. Once you get to the main teams, it's honestly kind of a 50-50 about the style that you're going to go up against. It could be freshly promoted open and IM teams, or it could be teams that are looking to make advanced or have been relegated down from advanced and really want their spot back. So it just it's all case dependent. Now let's get into what makes a bad anti-strat, and I am guilty of bad anti-stratting, but everyone has to learn, and the best teacher is experience. As an IGL in open and IM, it is easy to fall into the trap of watching demos and seeing if your opponent is playing the same rounds back to back, and oftentimes at this level they are. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched Inferno demos or Mirage demos where the CT, well, sorry, the T side has run the same pistol, the same gun rounds. It almost mirrored. If you watch the demos like side by side, it's essentially the same rounds going back to back. So what your brain tells you to do is to set up rounds to counter them on a round by round basis. And this is the wrong way to counter strat. Because if they change their playstyle, you're hecked. And secondly, it doesn't teach you anything about in-game leading. You just kind of put people there and hope they do their job. And then the big one to tie everything together, your team will suffer long term because you focus on setting up against individual teams rather than focusing on creating a system that works against a wide variety of setups and then mid-rounding appropriately. The biggest example I can give of this is that we spent probably two to three matches trying to anti-strat opponents in this way. We were going round by round on the CT side trying to anti-strat T side attacks. And it only worked once. And to be completely honest, it only worked because I stopped trying to anti-strat at like round four and I ended up calling our own game. However, I want to make it clear that there are instances where anti-stratting like this is okay. If you know that T or CT side will run a certain setup in this coming round and it's a make or break deal for the economy, to give yourself the advantage, run an anti-strat. The bad habit people get into is anti-stratting all the time. You just have to pick and choose the appropriate time to do so. So for example, if you know that after a half buy, the CTs on Mirage will like to push mid through a double connector setup with one person holding window, your goal then could be to contact out A if you know the remaining A anchor will be playing on Palace Balcony or towards default. Now let's talk about the quote unquote good anti-stratting. You can consider the good anti-stratting to be similar to a mid round where your anti-strat will be based off of information you will get in the early, mid and late round and adjusting accordingly. I'm now going to go over how I demo review the CT side in order to have the best possible mid rounds I can as a T-sided IGL. So firstly, I like to demo review two maps that I'm going to be playing on. So I find that two is the sweet spot and that any more is redundant, but only doing one is not enough. So for example, if your upcoming match is on nuke and the team has only played one nuke map, then watch that demo anyways. Watching two will give you enough of an idea of what the habits are of the team you are going to be going up against. So at the higher levels, what you're going to want to look at is what does their early round look like? Do they aggro and fight for map control or do they play passive and wait? What does their mid round look like? How do they rotate into their late round positions? Do they go for information late? Do they double team and go into apartments? Everything can change. And then what does their late round look like? Do they bunker down? And then importantly, how much utility do they have left over? If you're already in a late round and you know they're poor on utility, but you still have a ton, then potentially you can throw an execute onto a site and have a very good chance of closing out. Then look at how they play for information. Do they bring an extra person? 
what type of utility do they use to play for information? Do they only flash and try to clear out banana on Inferno, or do they molly and then try to push down with it? And then, do they only send one person for information, or do they send a duo to try to get the trade potential? Then the next is how do they react when they go a man down, and how do they react when they go a man up? Both are very different, but both of them will give you a ton of information on how enemies play. At the open and IM level, you can expect the CS to be a lot more basic than this. Teams aren't often going to have protocols in place for taking map control and going for information, etc. So then, what can I look at when I'm at this level of play? Well, the things you can still look at are what the early to mid round setups are, because if you know that they like to go for um, apartments aggression as a CT on Inferno, then you can know that if you set up early, you can maybe catch one of them off. You can look at how they react when they go a man down or a man up, because that'll give you information on how you can base your mid rounds. And then the, personally, I like to be exploitative and look for their worst performing player and then find out who the rotating person on the team is. Because if you have those pieces of information, you can start looking at the following. So for the player that's underperforming, what makes the player underperform comparatively to the rest of their team? Are they continuously exposing themselves and dying first? Do they over aggro on their own? Or do they not know utility so when you throw a Molotov at them, they don't know that a smoke extinguishes it? You know, that's kind of an extreme example, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Also a big one, look at the pathing of this player, and actually all of the players on the team for that matter, because you will find that most players at this level have one to two comfort spots where they will play. Once you begin to narrow down where those spots are on the map, you can throw execute to counter those spots and push the CT into areas where they are uncomfortable in, giving you as the T the advantage of the engagement. This becomes especially true when teams go down a man. They will almost instantly go into where they are most comfortable to give themselves the best chance of winning an engagement. So, at this level, your anti-stratting should be reactionary or mid-rounded based on the information you see in the demos. For example, if on the T side of Inferno, you get an opening pick onto the B site, and you know that when the CTs go down a man on B, the arch player will rotate off and the remaining ACTs will play in mini pit and graveyard looking towards apartments, you will have a solid understanding that your anti-strat can be to lurk smoke from lane that will cover off mini pit and graveyard site to lane. Then what you can do is you can molotov grave while two players are wrapping from arch and you can isolate fights that way. And then once you isolate the fights individually, you can get into post plants and have a really strong position going forward. To conclude my thoughts, anti-stratting in the traditional sense should be avoided. Anti-strat your opponent only when you need to and focus most of your attention in anti-stratting their positions, rotations, and preferred areas of play. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, sub to the channel, it's greatly appreciated. I like seeing the numbers go up. Um, if you have any requests for future videos, uh, this video itself was a viewer request. I'm always happy to cover different topics, especially for in-game leading. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me, my Twitter and Twitch are linked in the description below. It's probably the best, second best place to ask me questions. The first best place is down in the comments, especially because then um, everyone gets to see what the answer is and everyone can learn together. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.